Hey guys, it's Ryan and Allie with the Lad family. This is going to be episode 6 of our journey with the MPS1 hurdler syndrome. If you're just now joining us, we want to welcome you. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up as well as subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we launch a new video. We left off episode number 5 with, uh, with Kennedy getting her central lines removed and right after that we stayed in Cincinnati for just a little bit and then we were on our journey back home. Kennedy had her central lines removed on December 4th of 2015 and um, that was sort of our last step to being able to move home. Most patients just have to stay for day plus 100, which is 100 days after bone marrow transplant, but Kendi's journey was much longer. We moved to Ohio in May, and this time, like I said, it's December. And so after Kendi had her central lines out, we still had a little bit longer to stick around. We came home for Christmas that year. So Christmas of 2015, we came home. We came home really quietly and kept it very low key, family only. Kendi was still very immune suppressed and sickness could have been a big setback for us. So we did have Christmas here. It was so exciting to be home. We were home for Thanksgiving that year too. And so we went back to Cincinnati and we stayed, I think, it was about a month or two. I want to say we came home in January. We officially moved home towards the end of January, uh, packed up our apartment, and we were ready to come home. It was a little scary to leave because that had become our safety net, and that's where our doctors are. Um, but it was it was the next step in what we needed to do. So as we were actually loaded up in the truck, and I don't know if Ryan wants me to tell this or not, but. <laughs> I am. It's been on my heart and it was something that was really hard for me to let go of and I can remember Ryan saying, why do you keep beating on a door that God is obviously closing? So we were in the moving truck and I got a, I don't remember if it was a call or a text from my work and they wanted to do a conference call. And so they did a conference call with, I believe my boss and the HR director, my HR director and they were telling me, this was on a Wednesday, and I was to report back to work on a Monday. Now, the whole time I'd been in... Um, but they needed your answer on a Friday, too, by Friday. Yeah, I had to give an answer by Friday. So the whole time I had been in Cincinnati, I did have donated vacation. I'm very thankful for. Um, that lasted me through Kennedy's transplant, and then when her first transplant failed, I got more donated vacation. That lasted me through her second transplant. Once Candy got discharged, I was working part time from home to keep my job. Um, from the apartment, not from, from the yeah. apartment. Yes, from the apartment. It was extremely difficult. Candy cried all the time. It's actually when I let her cry out in the bed because I had to work when she was sleeping and being there by myself more. I just didn't have the help, and I really needed to get the hours in. So if I knew then what I know now, I definitely would not have let that linger on because I wouldn't have worked so hard to keep my job if I would have known what the end result was going to be. And so basically when I kept going back and forth, I said, you know, you've let me work part time all this time. I've actually accomplished more and I work harder for you now from home part time than I ever got work done full time. And we went back and forth. I'm not going to get into all the details, but she came back and said that I could work part-time, but I would have to come on site Monday through Friday from eight to one. And that wasn't part-time for me. I could not drive on site every day. Uh, like I said, Kendi was still extremely immune suppressed and she couldn't go to a daycare. I would have had to have someone come into our home and I'd been with her fighting for her life. So I just couldn't come home on a Wednesday and leave her on Monday. Uh, so eventually it turned into they threatened me for being a no-show, and that's the point when Ryan said, why do you keep fighting this? And I didn't have the time and the energy to spend on a lawsuit. That's not where my energy needed to be. And I don't know if that's what I needed to do, but it definitely crossed my mind. Um, so I sent in my resignation letter. I was completely heartbroken. I had been there for seven years. Um, I will say that being out now, I realize what a burden I don't know if a burden is the right question, but how miserable people were there and that people just worked there because it was a good job and that's where they thought they needed to be. But being on the outside now and what I've been through, I just 
would always want to be happy. I mean, I'm so grateful for Ryan's job and that he's able to provide for us and keep our lights turned on. It is extremely hard because we still have all the same bills that we had before we moved to Cincinnati and now on one less income. I was so scared when it happened, so scared. I've worked my entire life. I've worked since middle school. Um, we had a family lumber business that the bus would drop me off and I just have incredible work ethic. Ryan wanted me to stay home after I had Kennedy and I said, I'm not gonna be a stay at home mom. That's not what I wanna do. And so I went back to work, but um, ended up being a stay at home mom. And like Ryan said, we'll find a way and God will provide. And I'm thankful for Ryan for picking up extra jobs and doing everything he has to do. And also the people that have continued to support us because it has been a little bit hard. Um, I'm still very thankful because we still are very blessed. We live and nicely in a house that Ryan built right before we met and um, a clean nice place that Kendi could come home to. So that was a hard blow right at the very beginning but it's just one of those things that you'll see through our journey that the devil will continue to try to bring you down. And I will, like I said, I'm not going to go into the whole thing but I will say that this sort of started when our journey first started the community rallied around us and we felt so much love and I saw the way Ryan's employer treated him and how they rallied around him and they just loved on him and the very first thing that came out at my employer was I wanted our golf flyer published in the newspaper so we had like an in-house newspaper or a, basically and um, it had a cross on it and they said they couldn't publish it because it had a cross on it so I called Ryan and I think I was anxious because I wanted to get out to all the people that I worked with and Ryan said no. He said either they publish it like it is or they don't publish it and they didn't publish it. And like we told you in a past video, we went into this golf tournament, I think they were thinking, you know, raise $10,000, we didn't know how many players we could get and so I was anxious. I was anxious to fill the spots and to raise money and to be secure and we didn't need that flyer, God still provided. We had, Ryan might know how many teams? Had 55 teams on a Monday, not even a weekend, but. Uh, 55 teams on a Monday that was created and planned in less than a month. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just amazing. It was so overwhelming. I will never forget that feeling when they handed us that check. And it was just like, like Ryan said, God will provide. And so that golf tournament got us through the year it got us through months after losing my job and god just continued to provide so i i hate to go on a ramp it there but that's a it really is a big part of our story and it's one of those testimony pieces that just showing how god showed up and showed out and that the devil's always knocking i mean we went through many trials besides what we've documented besides kendy and lincoln's journey and every time the devil's been there god's been there stronger so, and with that, um, whenever we moved home, it wasn't like Kennedy could just go to any daycare because she was so immune suppressed. And um, unfortunately, our family is uh, all of them still working, so nobody could just come in and, and take care of Kennedy every day that we could um, not count on. But they've got lives to to do as well, and had other stuff to do. So watching. Watching Kennedy on occasion, yes, but uh, being dedicated every day for five to six, eight hours, however many it needed to be, was just not into question. So there was no choice but just for Ken or for <laughs> Allie to resign and um, just let God close that door and, and see what He could open. So, so and with it's been the best thing. Ryan can uh, on this video he can post pictures of Kennedy at that stage, and you'll still you'll see she was still really sick she was almost two at this point so she was a year and a half she wasn't walking um she hadn't been crawling very long so one and a half years old and wasn't walking and just started crawling so you can see how far behind she still was and how much farther we needed to go well she had spent six months in the hospital she'd spent over half her life in the hospital yeah, at that so time. i mean you know being cramped up in a crib and just being able to play on a floor mat that's you're not gonna be able to progress much there but um no we we just let god close that door and and move on from there and 
um, don't look back, you know, you, and nobody's going to take care of your kid like you are. And, um, I mean, family members, they do, they care for the kids, they love them and, and they take care of them. But, you know, nobody's going to take care of, of your kid like, like the mother and the father's going to. So. Like mama. <laughs> That's neither here nor there, but um, no, and I, I felt a whole lot more comfortable with how fragile Kennedy was, uh, immune suppressed, and um, just, you know, what we'd went through, the trauma that we'd been through, I, I did. I wanted, wanted Allie at home to take care of her and, and hold her and comfort her and, and uh, just, just treat her like the princess that she is. So I think we were still traveling to Cincinnati once a month. Once a week initially. When we first moved back, it was weekly, and then it moved to bi-weekly, and then right. kind of spread it on and till monthly, and then eventually every three months, and where she's at now every every six months, so twice a year for her checkups, unless we have something else going on. Uh, but anyways. It was a lot to take in, and so I miss all my work peeps, and I won't say I'll never go back, but, um, it's one of those things that it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. So we moved home and I don't really know what happened after that. Things kept getting good. I feel like, um, Kendi started walking in April, I believe. And, um, right after moving home, they wanted us, I think either right when we moved home, like before we left Cincinnati or whenever we came home, they had done an immune study and it takes, what, like two or three weeks to get that immune study back or something like that. So. It takes a while to get it back. And we, ha um, I think we had it before we left Cincinnati. We moved home. And then after we were home, they called and said her immune study had come back so good that they were floored that they think that the lab had got the <laughs> uh, um, vials or you know whatever you want to state there just had got them mixed up with somebody else's and so whenever we came back for another checkup appointment they made us uh draw check it. <laughs> draw again to recheck it and sure enough you know there's another another thing of, of god showing up and showing out that that kennedy had uh, just a, a a great immune system better than what we thought she had and um i mean it wasn't to the you know, a normal human beings, but where they expected her to be from all the double chemotherapy, double transplant, everything above that was, she was up there. So they were, they were pretty floored with that. So, um, with us moving home and Allie losing her position and how blessed we had, had been through our community. Um, we wanted to do two things. One of them was, uh, start a nonprofit organization to, continue to bless other hurler patient families um, going through transplant and raise funds to find a cure for for MPS one hurler syndrome that has no cure at this time and also um, Allie wanted to start a little girl's clothing business which would work hand in hand with the foundation uh, so so much a percentage of the the profits from the uh, clothing business would go towards the foundation to help support it. So, and my thought was, it was a, it is a mobile trailer. It's called K Francis. It's a mobile trailer. So we would travel around to different events to help reach more people, to tell more people about MPS One. So the trailer itself would be creating creating awareness. And our logo was um, was the K was K K Francis after candy, and it was cute kids clothing for a cure. Um, my grand opening was in September of that year and, but I want to back up just a little bit. And as we said, the devil kept knocking and he knocked again, right after we moved home and right after I lost my job, you may have heard us or you remember us rallying for Jackson Moles. Jackson has Hurler syndrome like Kennedy and Lincoln and he was Kennedy's age. He had transplant before Kennedy, but had severe complications of graft versus host disease. And we had gotten, I feel like I had gotten really close with Julia. It's a really hard process to go through. We met a lot of great people and going through it with somebody that has the same disease 
you get even closer and everybody feels like family. And so to watch Jackson suffer so much was very heartbreaking and you're always trying to be on your own journey, but you also see these other people around you and you can't help but to mourn and worry and just, it becomes a part of your life. And so right after we moved home, Jackson passed away. Jackson passed away in February and it was almost like hard to be home because survivor's guilt, not knowing what to say, thinking that could be your kid and thinking it could still be your kid because Jackson had been transplanted, he had been discharged, um, and then it just took a turn for the worse and God called him home. And I can remember going to Jackson's funeral and I can remember a friend, Elena, pointed it out that they were lifting their hands up, praising and worshiping God at the funeral of their child. And I know that was extremely hard, but they still kept the faith. They knew that he was healed. They knew that Jesus died on the cross for us and they... They knew that he wasn't suffering anymore. He wasn't suffering anymore. It was he almost... He had been healed. The thing yeah. that basically I'm sure that we're not the only ones, but every night when we lay our heads down, we, we get on our knees and pray that God will heal our kids. And that's one of the, you know, they knew that he had been healed. It wasn't here on earth and uh, the selfish part of you wants to keep them here. But on the other hand, God healed them. He, he answered the prayer. and. Anytime you pray a prayer asking for something, it may not be the answer that you're looking for, but God will answer your prayer. That's that's 100%. And that was part of the hard, even going into bone marrow transplant, the risk, the ones that do pass away and having to sign those papers that it could be your child. And it's just, I have no words. Um, I do want to say that since then, it, it this is 2016 when this happened, it is 2019, and Corey and Julia have a sweet baby girl that loves her brother Jackson, and they show her pictures often, and her name is May, and she does not have hurler. Mm -hmm. um, we are so thankful that they were able to have this opportunity to have a sweet baby girl and somebody to just love on and share their life with. They always wanted kids, and I think I'm telling this right, that it's one of those stories that they had just completed like foster papers and then they found out they were pregnant. So there's so much hope out there. And like I said, the devil is always right around the corner, but they are just true testaments to never give up and to keep the faith. I know it's extremely hard for them and it's something that they still battle with every day, but they've done been a great example for us and a great example to a lot of families. One of the main things that I remember um, from Jax's funeral, not only the, the trauma of everything and the uh, survivor's guilt and everything that, that I felt, but uh, Allie and I drove separate to the uh, receiving friends because I was at work and she left here from the house and that's neither here nor there, but I was on my way home by myself and um, I was listening to K-Love on the radio and I remember them just talking and, you know, saying, you know, if you could ask God one question, what would it be? And so um, I, after what we had just witnessed and, and what we had just been through, a million questions, you know, entered my head that, you know, what would I ask God? What, what would I, um, uh, what would I say? And, you know, like, why is Kennedy sick? Why did Jax have to, to pass away? Why, you know, why this, why that? And then I got to really thinking hard and it finally hit me that, you know, what is, what is my purpose in life is what, um, what I think that at the time I thought that I, that I would ask him, you know, what's, that's what we all search for, trying to figure out our purpose, our, what do we need to strive for in life? And um, I remember coming home, taking a shower, getting ready to go to sleep. And then I was, uh, while I was in the shower, I was thinking, you know what? How selfish of me to ask, what is my purpose? But the question I need to be asking, or that I would finally came up with is, what is God's purpose for my life? Because it doesn't matter what Ryan wants or what Allie wants Ryan to want, but 
you know, what is God's purpose? And that's what we all need to search for is, is what is God's purpose? So that's the main thing that I remember uh, coming home from, from Jax's funeral is just that, that coming on the radio and then making my small little brain think a little bit. But And so I feel like to add on to that is that's what I feel. I feel like raising awareness and fighting for my kids is my purpose. It, people always ask, how do you do it? How do you stay strong? I couldn't do it. You could, because I am. But I am because God has never left me. He has shown little glimmers of hope in places that, times that I never thought, you know, he would. And it gives us fight. It, this is our purpose. Our purpose is to find a cure. Our hashtag is cure2025. <laughs> but um, just to fight for our kids and to help others to have a voice. Rare disease is so hard to fight for. It's, um, I don't know what the words I'm looking for, but it doesn't get the funding and stuff. You hear me say that, but it's sort of come in full circle now where people are starting to fight for it. They're starting to be more rare disease and we're actually going to Capitol Hill for rare disease week 2020. So be in prayer for that. Um, so our purpose, we decided to start the Candy Lab Foundation. And like Ryan said, the Candy Lab Foundation is three things. It provides iPads to hurler patients and to be support for hurler patients. It raises awareness and it is on a mission to find a cure. We fund research for MPS1 hurler and like I said, my prayer circle is Cure2025. So you can find out more about the Candy Lad Foundation at www.candylad.org. And we also started K Francis. Um, the day that I announced, or my grand opening for K Francis <laughs> was in September of that year. So September of 2016. And on that day, I told family and the friends that came to the grand opening that I was pregnant. And just as things were starting to get easy, Kendi had started walking in April. She was almost potty trained by this point. She had started preschool in August. She was making huge strides. I mean, life was literally what we had been through. It was so easy. It was getting so easy and we felt so normal. And then I found that I was pregnant. So <laughs> I don't after, know how that happened, but <laughs> after all the tears and the crying and just being shocked and not knowing what we were going to do, we decided so you can have um, in utero testing to see if the child is affected with MPS, and um, you can do the amniocentesis and you can do I don't know what the other test is, but um, I don't know if we or I chose, but. I don't really feel like it was a discussion because wasn't gonna change anything. it wasn't going to change anything. Your only option is to do it maybe to be more prepared or to do it to have an abortion. And we weren't going to have an abortion and I didn't want my whole nine months of pregnancy to be miserable because I was mourning the oh, loss of my up. healthy child and that my child was going to be born with MPS and I was going to have to go through this all over again. And it increases the chances of a miscarriage as well. So yeah. um, we know of a, another hurler, hurler family that um, they had the testing and then had a miscarriage and then got the results back that their... The baby was not affected. Yeah. So we, uh, we prayed about it and we found, you know, it wasn't going to change anything. We wasn't going to abort. We wasn't going to do anything. So we felt like the best thing to do was enjoy the surprise pregnancy and do what we could and enjoy it and and just pray and i'm not gonna lie i'm a chicken so there's no way that i was going to voluntarily <laughs> let somebody put a needle in my stomach so um the nine months was really about the same as candy the first trimester i was extremely sick and then the day my second trimester hit it was fabulous i and one of those crazy pregnant people um i didn't mind being pregnant both my pregnancies were good during pregnancy I was still able to stay active. Um, we were still traveling back and forth to Cincinnati for kidney yeah. checkup appointments, which I'm gonna throw a little thing in. I remember uh, we, were, we stayed in hotels at this time, and uh, so we were in and out trying to figure out what's the best hotel. And um, But I remember staying this one particular, off, uh, it was the Best Western uh, near the mall in Cincinnati. 
And uh, Kennedy had just started like talking and the only word that she really said was, yeah. And it wasn't even really, it was more like, mm. and uh, so Kennedy was, uh, Allie was on the bed and Kennedy was climbing up the side of it or she was on it and coming off the side, I think is what it was. And she'd got to the very edge and I'm standing right behind her um, just waiting to grab her whenever she finally gets off because she wasn't, she couldn't hardly walk. She just started talking and, and so I'm sitting there. So she's clinging on to the bed and just, you know, looking around, trying to figure out who's going to get her. What's, and, and me, she didn't have no idea that, that I was behind her and, and could catch her at any point in time if she was to fall. So out of nowhere, she hears this dad voice just come over and say, uh, do you want me to help you out? And Kennedy gave that little, yeah. And uh, so I grabbed her and put her off. But, you know, just like the whole Jack story of, of hearing that on the radio, how many times do we try to fight through everything ourselves and do everything ourselves? And all we got to do is, is just pray and ask God to help. And I promise you, he's standing right behind you. And uh, we'll, we'll pick you up just like I was able to pick Kennedy up and, and help her out with no problem. So... Um, just want to throw that little jab in there. Anytime you're having, <laughs> having any trouble, all you got to say is, yeah, and God will help. He'll, he'll pull you through it. We also met a wonderful family while we were inpatient, and um, they're the Schroders. She's actually from Harriman. And so we only stayed in the hotel one time, and then the Schroders opened up their home and their spare bedroom for us to stay during as we came for appointments and gave us food and a shower and everything we could possibly need. They were great and they became family. Um, we're extremely grateful for people like the Schroders that just took a leap of faith and stepped out and invited us into their home, invited us into their family and just gave us more support. Um, she was from Harriman and after high school and all that had moved to Cincinnati. Yeah and uh, met her husband and now lives in Cincinnati. And then so they- uh, Just happened to find our story from a share, a share of somebody local that she was friends with. And she drilled down and um, <laughs> she brought us dinner and came and met us at the hospital for the first time, actually while we were still inpatient. Um, but it's just little things like that, that God keeps planting in our lives. And um, there's gonna be a lot of them through these episodes that yeah. you're that you're gonna hear and see and it's just unbelievable to to see God work. And that year, uh, also, after we moved home and after I found out we were pregnant, uh, Ryan's brother and my sister-in-law, they were going to the beach and they had a spare room. And I don't know if they invited us or we invited ourselves, but we <laughs> tagged along on their trip and they let us stay in their condo. And it's something I'll be forever grateful for because we had not been on a trip since Kendi was six months old, I think and that was to the beach with Ryan's dad. And so just to be able to get out and go somewhere was amazing. It was amazing to go somewhere as a family and with family and to go with my nieces. Um, my nieces really take after Kennedy and love Kennedy. And that was the other thing for us about moving home, to see the progress that Kennedy made in such a really short amount of time, just to be in her own environment and I can remember say, them saying things like that in the hospital. I can't think of a real example, but maybe Kendi not gaining weight and her needing the feeding tube. They say, take a leap of faith, get out, get their, them in their normal environment, and they will thrive. And Kennedy did. She did just that. Um, Harper and Maddie helped that a lot, though. They... Especially Harper. She treated, <laughs> at this time, Harper was five or six. And so she treated Kennedy like a baby doll. So she was the best physical therapy that Kennedy could have had. And it was great. And we're thankful for TEIS. Um, that's another um, tip here. If you are medically fragile, I don't know all the rules, but if you're medically fragile and you're under the age of three or you're just behind in areas, please contact TEIS if you're in Tennessee and other states have programs like this. Um, Tennessee Early Intervention System, they were amazing for us. So our insurance only pays for 20 therapies, which I think is combined therapies, speech, 
OT, PT, any therapy. And so we didn't have enough on our insurance and TEIS covered that for us. So through TEIS, Kennedy was able to have speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy. She got her ankle braces covered by Friends of Tennessee and TES helped her transition into the school system once she turned three. So they were invaluable to us. We're so thankful for that program and I highly recommend. So that is a tip that I've left out. Um, so for any medical moments out there, and there might be other criteria, just, um, you know, for a NICU baby, I know that they qualify. For a drug baby, they qualify. Um, so it's a great program to check out and it's free. <laughs> so, so this be. is a lot of information in this video. <laughs> but I think, um, I think you know what's next. Uh, we won't get into that tonight, but Lincoln was born on May 4th of 2017. It gets crazy because Lincoln is definitely crazy. May the 4th be with you. <laughs> and we'll get more into the next video, but I didn't like the name Lincoln. That was Ryan. We'll talk about that later. One, uh, one jab, one more jab if I could throw it in there. Um, all the way back to Kennedy being diagnosed is probably my biggest testimony through this whole thing is that obviously Allie stated in episode one that I was a little bit of a partier. I wouldn't go as far as saying a partier. I would more say a social drinker. And so I could socially drink a couple. I could socially drink a lot, whichever one happened. Um, but that's my biggest testimony to this whole deal is whenever we found out about Kennedy and her diagnosis and I just hit my knees and I told God, I said, regardless if you heal Kennedy here on earth or you heal her in heaven with you, I will never touch another drop of alcohol. I'm, you know, God doesn't make deals, so you can't bargain with him. You can't, you can't make a deal with him on uh, 9.99 or 10.99. So I knew that and I just, uh, I just told him, I said, regardless of whether you heal her here on earth or you heal her in heaven, I'll never touch another drop of alcohol. And that was back in March of 2015. And uh, it's been tough, it's been rough, but I have stuck to that. And um, life's a lot better. Allie doesn't get on to me for going out as much with the guys and hanging out. And, uh, but I will say, he, yes, he was a part of your through school and as he got older but he was also a dj so it was sort of the atmosphere he was in it was sort of the people he was around um people our age you know just social drinking and ryan is not an introvert and so <laughs> the drinking just encourages him more and so then he would keep drinking um yeah not that i i think drinking is a bad thing uh, um now drinking to get drunk i you know that's obviously a sin, a sin that's stated in the bible it's just what i did whenever i drank i i probably flirted too much probably you know sent text messages just done done bad things that a married man um or even a taken man engaged and a uh, father uh, all the above just shouldn't do and so it wasn't the drinking you know, I, I, I wouldn't consider myself an alcoholic that, you know, I had to have a drink every minute of every day. It was, it was just what I did when I drank. And, um, I'm a better husband, I believe a better father now for it. And, uh, I still sin every single day. I'm not perfect by any means and not trying to state that I am, but, um, I just want to put that in there that, you know, that's, that's one thing that, uh, that's my biggest testimony out of, uh, Kennedy and Lincoln's diagnosis and their sickness is that, uh, that it, it did, it, it got me to stop drinking and just be a better man and a better Christian and, uh, a more faithful, more faithful husband. So, so we tried a new setup tonight, guys. I hope you liked it. Uh, we're just trying to be more, uh, personable comfortable I don't know it's hard because people say I don't smile and then I don't know <laughs> how to just stare at the camera so we thought maybe it could help me interact more with him and not just have to look directly at the camera the whole time it would help so we're sort of working with things we're still new again we appreciate your constructive criticism we appreciate your comments below we appreciate your likes 
and your follows. It really helps us. It helps us to know what you want to see, what you want to know, who we're helping, how to change the lighting. We know we have some shadows back here. So thanks for bearing with us and we hope you come back next week. Also, um, as you see, I'm, I'm wearing a foundation shirt and Allie's wearing a Kennedy and Lincoln shirt. So um, we're thinking about going with a different color this year. I'm not too sure that we'll go away from the gray on the foundation shirt just yet. But um, if that's something that you're interested in, just comment below and uh, or uh, private message us and let us know that you'd be interested in shirt. We can ship them out. Uh, we can meet. We can do just about basically anything that we need to do. So um, we're not too sure on the prices of that yet because we need to get logistics taken care of. But um, if you're interested in a shirt or a, a vehicle sticker or um, we'll put all that uh, later on in the videos and pictures and stuff. But yeah, just leave us a comment below whether you like the new setup or you don't or um, if I need to be smiling more or if Allie needs to be smiling more or you know anything to help us out because like we stated in past videos we're brand new to this we're just trying we're um, trying to get our story out to let you know what we've been through and help other families and, and bless them and uh, get the Kennedy Light Foundation out there and just anything that we can do to help is what we're trying to do so leave us comments let us know what you do and don't like hit the thumbs up subscribe hit the bell and uh, just let us know anything that we can we can do to help. I am going to butt in and say that based on last year's pricing, which should still be the same for what we have in stock right now, adult t-shirts are $20, kids t-shirts are $15, and unless you're just buying a whole bulk, we could do $5 flat rate shipping, should be no problem. So $20 for adults and $15 for kids. If that changes, we'll... We'll put them in the comments and tell you in future videos. <laughs> and we're about to release a new shirt probably because um, right now we're videoing in January and February 29th is Rare Disease Day and May 16th is MPS Awareness Day. So we want to make sure you have some Kennedy and Lincoln swag or you're wearing some purple or you have a pin or something to tell the world about MPS. So like always, we want to thank you for watching and thank you for joining us. We love every one of you and... We want comments. No, I'm just kidding. But y'all have y'all have awesome. a blessed day. Thank you so much. And Ali is smiling.